Ah, <sighs> look. If you're not being progressive in 2024, what on earth are you doing, you bigots? Well, have you any? Have, you, have any of you got any answers? What are you doing, you bigots? Not being progressive in 2024. All right, fine. My panel is dumbfounded <laughs> with how bigoted they are not being uh, progressive in 2024. Well, it's a type of author. Is, it, is anyone going to speak? It's, it's a type of orthodoxy, isn't it? Um, you know, uh, like in any religion uh, or, mm. or any politics, there's a party line, a three-line whip, whatever you want to say. Um, there is the correct opinion and then there is thought crime. It's as simple as that. If you're not progressive, if you're not on board with mm. the message, as Critical Drinker says, then you then you are guilty of thought, thought crime. You're outside of the pale. Um, yeah. You're on the wrong side of history, as leftists love to say. Uh, well, all I would say is just to screw all that. I want to drop an F-bomb, but I won't. Just screw all of that. No, 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 I'm not having it. No, I don't have to be progressive. No, you can stick your progressive message in where the sun don't shine, and that's the end of it. How, how about that? How about that? What are you going to do? <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. It's, it's going to get worse. So this is a great headline, great quote from Russell T. Davies confirming that Doctor Who is going to have loads of progressive messaging in it, obviously, because, you know, if you're not writing that in 2024, what on earth are you doing, obviously? Which is a moral argument. It's, um, mm. you know, sort of moral grandstanding, isn't it? It's, well, I'm better than you because I'm writing about this stuff. And, and you're, if you're not doing it, then what are, what are you doing? Like, that's awful. Um, it's the sort of well, moral grandstanding shit that these people well, have. What would garbage. Would they consider that I write negatively about their progressive bologna sausage? No, it wouldn't be progressive, though, would it? No, no. I'll, I'll be progressive. writing about I'll I'll be writing about the 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 detachment that the progressive messaging sends to everybody. Their yeah. their um their their monoculture push that they're doing right now. Um, they're right. they're less than they're 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 less than uh, uh the, the 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 little breath that they actually look at everything with. Uh, mm. Myopic, I guess, would be the fancy way to say that. But yeah, I, myopia. yeah, I, I have a feeling that uh, Russell T. Davies is suffering from all kinds of just, you know, oh, he's, narcissism. He's yeah, he's sociopathy. Mental. I mean, let, let, let's see just how mental he is, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So again, this is in that interview with Rolling Stones. Uh, Alan Sepinall. Rolling Stone. My God, how far they've fallen. They are just some trash. Absolutely garbage piles of crap now so basically at one point the interviewer pressed for his thoughts regarding shoot again was casting as the first black actor to ever portray the series titular hero proper because there was someone else that played it actually uh the fugitive doctor a future incarnation and davy said it's about time and therein lies right what do you mean it's about time that a black person played? what do you mean it's about time why why because he's black he's magical what's going on and this is whoopee. the whole nonsense, which I've said time and time again, is that diversity as a concept is a racist concept because it's predicated that the, 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 the predication that diversity is good and diversity is a strength is, is all that because of the color of your skin, you're something special. That's racist. It's racism. It's racist. It's completely racist. Um, so him saying it's about time, one, completely destroys all of the statement of him going, we, we, cut, we, we had loads of people audition. No, you didn't. Why is it about time otherwise then? No, absolutely not. We know that you didn't have loads of people auditioning for this part. We clearly know you did not do that now. Um, it's about time. Why? Why? Because what? Less white people means more good, I guess. Uh, but it gets, it gets worse. It gets worse. Um, sometimes big old terrestrial and streaming shows can be slow machines to catch up with the world. What What world? The Western world, which now wants to denigrate white people nonstop. Yeah, maybe. And I'm getting older now. So you become one of those gatekeepers of television, for want of a better word. And your job is then to hold the gate open. Come on, everyone. No, gatekeeping is good. Gatekeeping is good. We need to do more gatekeeping. We don't need idiots like you sitting there going, yeah, it's just everyone's welcome. No, not everyone is welcome. So reinforcing Davy's argument, the aforementioned Gatwa, who was in the interview, said 
that's what the show does. It evolves and it regenerates. I feel like it's about time. Of course you do, because you're getting a paycheck, you dunce. And I'm here. For all you dammers out there, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> cool. You're just going to rub our faces in it then, are you? Because that's basically what you're doing. It's just this, like, ah, uh, anyway. It gets worse. I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to... You're going to simmer before I let you speak, guys. It gets worse, if you can imagine it. So on the topic of personal identities, Davies then addressed the fact that both he and Gatwa are gay. Because that's so important, apparently. Telling Seppenwall that while many feared otherwise, their sexualities would have no undue or excessive influence on the season's storytelling. That is nonsense, because Gatwa couldn't act his way out of a paper bag. He is as gay as they come, and he is himself on screen. And he says this, I don't walk around thinking all day about being queer, and what's my queer energy today? I bet you you do, though, Russell, mate. <laughs> I bet you you do. And I bet you try and make sure everyone knows. I mean, even in this interview, you're making sure everyone knows that you're queer. So you do. It's virtue signaling. It's narcissistic. It's your entire identity, and it's sad. It's pathetic. Identities, in terms of your orientation and you know what your ideological beliefs is, it, that's what it's become. It's become their culture. It's become their religion, as opposed to British culture. Right? That used to be your identity. Britain was, you know, British was a cultural identity. Now it's woke ideology or what you do with your genitals. That's your identity. It's sad. It's pathetic. Anyway, it goes further. You're talking to people who live a queer life. There you go. So this is completely normal. And where I'm slightly amazed is that anyone finds this different. Come on, straight people. Come and find out. No, mate. Rather not. I'm good. Here's more. Anyway, to this end, Gatwa then noted that while he, uh, while many other, many have taken to describing his version of the Doctor as queer, he himself was reluctant to apply any human label to the doctor because they're an alien he says this they've been with all sorts that is labelless and limitless and i think it represents our ability to be limitless and our ability to be anything and that character can be anyone and played by anyone i feel very very honored that i get to be the first of a couple of things because i think if you're a true fan of the show here you go you understand that yeah no it's not how it works uh, you understand that the Doctor Who lends itself to inclusivity and diversity and welcoming different people in. That's what Russell has done. I'm very happy to be a part of that vision. And then, talking about the... Uh, well, there's an upcoming episode in this new season, which is um, an episode all about abortion. So that's going to be fun. Um, it's called like alien alien babies or something like that. Quite literally called alien babies. Some nonsense. I mean, cool. Uh, as on the nose as you can get. Um, and yeah, so basically, apparently, if you're not writing about that in 2024, what are you writing about? What are you doing? You bigots. And there ends my rant about it all. Thoughts, Bo? I'll go to you first. Um, well, you know, I, it certainly is long overdue. Uh, you know, I, I... I just have to agree. It's also it's it's long overdue that they make a, a biopic about Frederick Douglass and cast Ryan Gosling in the part. You know, it's it's high time that they make a new film about uh, Malcolm X and cast a, a, an ethnic Inuit in the role. It, it's long overdue. It's high time. Come on, anyone can be anything. All people are exactly the same, and at the same time, anyone can be anything. No, it's madness, isn't it? Of course. Absolutely madness. I mean, there's just no end to it. You hit the nail on the head. Like, we don't always go around, uh, like, expressing our queerness. Not everything I do and say is informed by my queerness. Yes, it is. Of course it is. You haven't got any other identity. You're not, you're not interesting. Right? That's the thing with a lot of this stuff, right? When, it, you, you know, I suppose the cliche is... Uh, in stand-up, that someone comes on the stage and they're really fat, so all their materials are about, bits about being fat. They come on and they're black, so all their comedy is about being black. They come on and they're Korean, it's all about being what it's like to grow up in a Korean family. A woman, it's all about what it is to be a woman. A gay, it's all about, and so on and so on. Yeah, mm. and in Lou, that is because they haven't got actually something interesting to say or talk about. Always, mm. always what it is. 
And well, uh, we're, we're everyone on this panel, and I'm sure nearly uh, nearly everyone that sees this video will agree with us. Um, we're just sick of it. It's just it's a it's 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 not very deep, is it? It's like it, there's not much substance to that. A, a gay man or a, 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 a cartel of gay men make uh, like shoehorning in, crowbarring in gayness to everything mm. they make. It's like yeah, we've done that for like quite a while now. Wasn't it like the 1970s, people going through New York chanting, we're here, we're queer, get used to it. Yeah, we're used to it. <laughs> we're now, we are now used to it. Yeah, you're here and you're queer. Yeah, well done. Yeah, good for you. Bully for you. Next, can we talk about something else? Can we do something else? Well, they're not quite finished beating us over the head with it, are they, it seems? I forgot about this part, actually. He, he, he said further, I think our rights are in danger. Not in the UK. <laughs> I'm talking as someone who's lived through gay liberation all the way through the AIDS crisis. Side note, the AIDS crisis could have been avoided if people weren't such degenerates, but, you know, whatever. All the way through to the freedoms that we have now, and I can see them spinning and being endangered, so there's no choice in this. And if the most exciting and entertaining action-adventure show on television can also do that, I think that's wonderful. So he's literally admitting he's co-opting Doctor Who for political messaging. Do you realize just how much of an idiot he is? Because yeah, his politics, no, 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 but his politics support importing these uh, parasites, as you call them, into the country mm. who will immediately remove, restrict his rights and start tossing him from buildings. I know. Yeah, but that's the same thing. Queers for Palestine. These people are such idiots. They don't. They, they're morons. Okay. They're the most, the most stupidest people. They have absolutely no critical thought because left-wing ideology there is not founded in logic. There's nothing logical about left-wing ideology. And that's why these people become incredibly aggressive when they confront someone that can practice a, a, a standard critical thought and have a normal conversation. And they just deconstruct all of their arguments to the point where these people spurge out and they just go, fuck you, because they cannot handle it because none of their arguments have any logic behind them. Well, we have plenty of that here in the States. So. Oh, I'm saying universal, yeah. yeah. Like just left-wing ideology in general. These people are so stupid. I also looked up, by the way, side note about left-wing versus right-wing. Left-wingers have an atrophied amygdala. Did you know this? <laughs> Did you, like, scientific truth. Did you know that people who, generally speaking, have left-wing politics have an atrophied amyg amygdala? Makes sense. But you know what also is uh, prevalent in, do you know, another element of uh, society that has atrophied amygdalas? Psychopaths. People who have psychopathy. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that, you know, there's a link between left-wing ideology and psychopathy. But I'm presenting it that there may be a link. Because <laughs> yeah. these people are genuinely quite psychopathic. And also general physiognomy. Now, I'm not saying I'm the handsomest man in the world. <laughs> but if you look at the mugshots of loads of anti-far leftists that have been arrested, they're like ugly freaks. You they're like, they're like them, mutants, right? Yeah. There's, 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 there really is. And this isn't just... That, that I think you can show people like uh, uh, Professor Ed Dutton talk about this, that there is correlation between being mm. having bad physiognomy, <laughs> i.e. being ugly, and being extremely left wing, yeah, uh, there's it's you can show that there's 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 patterns there. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, Sorry. I love it when you look at someone, you you see their comment on something, and then you go and try and find their picture, and you're like, yeah, physiognomy checks out. You look the sort that would have said that. <laughs> like, yeah, you you do. You look it. You look that sort. Yeah, well, that that particular atroph atrophy is also a marker for things like Alzheimer's and stuff like that. So, what are you talking about? Amygdala. Yeah, yeah, but it's also it's the fight or flight response. They don't recognize risk, hmm. so they don't recognize what they're doing is a risk to one their own physical self, but also their society well, around it. And their it's amygdala why are so atrophied they don't understand. That all yeah. of their policy, like this shit eater Russell T yeah. Davies, doesn't yeah. understand that what he's doing is dangerous. Well, and it's why superficially we 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 uh, we look at these people and think that they're very immature and incapable of critical thinking. But we also think of them as the, the most important part, incredibly selfish. 
self self mm. self interest is the only thing they have. Narcissistic, yeah. Yeah, the concept of um, turkeys voting for Christmas. Yeah, the idea that you would be, uh, let's say, for example, Muslim and gay, and then advocate for sort of uh, LGBTQ plus community in Palestine, where uh, yeah, Hamas would throw you off a roof immediately. Mm. Turkeys voting for Christmas. A lot of people yeah. in our country care for Calais or NGOs. There must be NGOs on the southern border with Mexico letting in as many yeah. unvetted criminals as possible. Are the type of people that are likely to suffer from crime, sort of middle-aged white women with, you know, with, with no strength or speed, that they're going to be they're going to be the victims of these people, but they're the ones egging it on, making it happen, literally on the front lines, so to speak. Yeah. Turkey's voting for Christmas. It's, 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 <clears throat> yeah, it's nonsense. It's a nonsense. civilization imploding on itself. Yeah. It's, yeah, I've it's, said, it's, I say this, I say it all the time. Like, you plot out how civilizations have fallen and collapsed. We're literally in that. We're on that trend. We're doing it right now. All the signs are there. Uh, Tom, we haven't heard from you yet, mate. I know this is, you know, Doctor Who and stuff, but we're talking about a bit broader concepts here as well. Maybe you want to chime in. I mean, really, again, Bo kind of hit on all the stuff I would have said before, too, is that they're claiming that they're not bringing their gayness to the table yet that's all they're doing um it's kind of like reminds me of the whole uh karate kid casting thing when they're like oh we've got an open casting and we're looking at all these different kids but yet they said from the start they were looking for an asian kid and lo and behold what did they cast so my point is is you guys are right like they go into this and they try to pretend that they're doing this that and the other to be virtuous and it's really just all about their fucking agenda at the end of the day. And I, I didn't care about Dr. Who that much before. I really don't care about it now. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Like, uh, th this got... is not selling me on the show at all. Well, that, that's the thing, actually. Yeah, no, that's a really, that's a worthwhile point, Tom, is that these pre-interviews, pre-season opening, because that's what this is. It's, a, it's an interview, pre-season opening. They're both doing the rounds. Russell T. Davies is there. So is Gatwa. This is supposed to be marketing, actually. This is supposed to be a headline grabber, supposed to be marketing, supposed to get people excited. It ain't doing it. Who's going to be excited about this? They're certainly not the fans of Doctor Who, even the ones which are left, you know, that are still there as in watching. I mean, they're going to just switch off from this stuff now. It's ridiculous. Um, no, and for those who are... I'm confused at what I'm talking about. No, I'm not talking about the Jaden Smith Karate Kid. We have another movie coming out next year yeah. that has has uh, Ralph Macchio and uh, uh, Jackie Chan in it, and it's mm. basically another Karate Kid. Only this one looks like it's going to be about an an Asian kid probably moving in to the U.S. or something like that, or vice versa. And yeah, so it's Jackie Chan and Ralph Macchio teaching this kid karate just like the first movie again why i do not know yeah um flav here drops in 10 pounds and says uh Rust Tree davis i brought you back and i can kill you too yes uh mexican iron man my favorite uh taco eating mexican youtuber says i don't want my screwdriver changed for god's sake the brits don't even have the ability to own uh, to own tough or even use guns what a moron! Yeah, that is true, actually. Yeah. yeah, like it's not what who. Well, maybe that's maybe that's Disney's influence as well. Then actually, that could be Disney's influence. The whole gun thing. Honestly, um, screwdrivers are legal. Kids could do more damage with a screwdriver, probably. Yeah, you are right. You actually are right. Uh, T Neil says bullshit. If it if its existence hinges on the use of social media, then it's no culture. Real culture is self sustainable, just like our beloved culture casino. Um. For F's sake, it's called narrative foreshadowing because it's supposed to be subtle, you know, like a shadow, not obnoxiously blatant, like an elephant driving a dump truck into an orchestra with 50 tuba players. Love that. Joke's on them. Nobody it's not a tuba. Shambles. There you go. It's not a tuba. Uh, it's it's not a tuba. Over on, <laughs> got some over on Streamlabs. Ben says, communists need to drag everyone down to their level because they are by nature unremarkable. That's why they have made up things that make them special, like season gender. Agree with that? Yeah, I just uh, saw the season gender thing. That is so redonkulous. 
I don't know. Unbelievable. Horse Radish Power says Russell T. Davis is a prime example of the useful idiot. And old Yuri told us what happens to useful idiots when they succeed in their revolution. They're the first to be wiped out. They cannot see the danger they put themselves in. Yeah, Yuri. What's his last name again? Yuri is the uh, Russian guy who defected to the US and did uh, a whole bunch. Yuri, I want to say Bez Bezmanov or something like that. I know what you're talking about, but yeah, I can't yeah. think of it either. Yeah, he, he did some speeches about communist um, subversion and how they sort of work to, to take down... Yuri Bezmanov? Yuri, what? Bezmanov? Yeah, yeah that's the one. Right. Sounds right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah interesting mm -hmm. guy. Look up his speeches. You'll see what's happening right now in society. Pretty crazy yeah. stuff, actually, when you think about it. Um, what's yeah, this? Uh, Olaf? Says, strange enough, they change a disabled character with Dr. Woke uh, as the bad guy Davros creator of the Daleks can't be in a wheelchair as that would make people believe all disabled are evil. Double standards. Yeah, that was a weird one. I remember a report on that at the time. It didn't make any sense. Like, they legit made Davros not disabled anymore. But he wasn't disabled in the first place. They were like, he's in a wheelchair. He's disabled. He wasn't. It was a life support machine. He wasn't disabled. It was a life support machine. People are dumb. Anyway, um, uh, Sci-Fi Quest says, if you're not writing that in 2024, what on earth are you doing? Writing a successful show. <laughs> this is this stuff, can I just say, this stuff has been around with us a long time. What made me think of it was Tom mentioned Karate Kid. Do you remember, uh, which Karate Kid was it? Pop Quiz. Where this bloody Hilary Swank is the, is the Karate Kid. Do you remember? The next Karate Kid, yeah. And so that mm. was years ago, right? That was didn't really, work. That, that was of course 1994, yeah. Right. So yeah. they've been doing this crap for a long time. Let, let's let's cast Hillary Swank as like the, the kid. I, I mean, it's just it's just crazy. And as for Doctor Who, I mean, last time I actually I honestly enjoyed Doctor Who was like the Sylvester McCoy is showing my age. But like mm. he, he, when I was a kid, basically, when when it got rebooted in the 2000s. I was honestly surprised, and again, this is no criticism of these guys, but when people like uh, Drinker or As or Nerdrotic or whatever, they're talking about Doctor Who, that they love it and stuff. I was already like in my 20s or 30s or whatever at that point. And I'm like, really? It's quite, Really? It's crap. It was always a bit crap. <laughs> it was always yeah. BBC low budget, a bit lame, but I was a kid, so it was fine. I enjoyed it, but... You're, you're a grown man and you think it's really good. And it's like, it's not really. It's not really. And now, of course, it's completely crap. I mean, what the stuff with Jodie, what's her surname? Jodie Whittaker, is it? Jodie Whittaker. Yeah, I managed to sit through two or three full episodes and bits of others. I just actually couldn't do it. Couldn't bring myself. It was, it was like an assault. It really was like, um, like, you, like you're being insulted. For mm. me, um, but uh, sorry. Anyway, sorry. Carry on. No, 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 no. no it's all good. It's all good. Um, I mean, yeah. But Doctor Who in the UK has always been a bit of a a bit of a joke. It was a bit of a schlock fest. Right. Well, that's kind of yeah. what Doctor Who always has been in the UK. To be fair, it's yeah, never it been never people put on a pedestal. It, it was, never took itself seriously, and that was part of its charm, right? Exactly. It was. It was. Right. It was a charming schlock fest right. that people were like, "Yeah, it's shit, but it's fun." Right. People were like, "It's fun." Um, but yeah, um, and now we it's do supposed have to... to be cutting edge and progressive and cool. And it's it not... now it was never any of those oh, things, and it's certainly not now. But uh, no. anyway, Sorry. Uh, Stumpy says, uh, I thought a British corporation trying to sell a black man to a white audience was outlawed a couple of centuries ago. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, like that. And now, uh, Dragon Reborn Darren, so had a hundred pounds, which is truly incredible. So, thank you so much, my dude. Uh, if this is a mistake, I genuinely encourage you to please do a refund. I'm always a bit speechless when people donate uh, quite large sums of money like this. I will say, no. Uh, if that's a mistake, no, like no, it's fine. I, I understand. Refund it. Um, but he does say, "I'm." If it's not, my God, thank you so much. Genuinely. Um, but he says, "I'm of Guyanese Indian descent, born in the UK. My parents came from uh, Ghana." In the 70s, they worked hard, never received benefits or handouts like scum today do. 
We work for the NHS. Its policy by 2026 is to hire people based on equity and diversity instead of on merit. And so this is part of the problem, actually. You'll, you'll find a lot of second generation or even first generation um, immigrants, but from you know a few generations ago, are incredibly pissed off with the system because, you know, and, and I, I've got, I, you're clearly contributing to society. Like, oh, obviously, that's fantastic, right? Um, you know, came in, dotted your I's, crossed your T's, did everything you had to do, didn't gain the system to gain entry. Um, yeah, I, I can see the frustration and anger that would come out. And you, you see that actually a lot in the States. So you'll see a lot of um, sort of Latino population uh, in the States they they want all immigration stopped because they're like why are these people coming in taking everything which i had to work you know incredibly hard for uh and you you often find that it's the same in the uk as well um yeah rules for thee not for me it seems that's that's the way it goes with some of these idiots um but thank you so much darren that's that's truly incredible um and yet scary to hear that the policy for the nhs is to hire i mean i'm surprised they're not doing it now to be fair mate uh, to hire on equity and diversity instead of merit. I mean, basically, they are doing it now because there was a recent scandal which came out which showed a lot of the nurses uh, and I think even the doctors, if I remember rightly, basically highly, supposedly highly qualified staff, uh, yeah, gained the system to get to, to get, get, get their qualifications. Um, so that's always fun as well. The NHS, not a good system at all, especially if you look at the health outcomes for the NHS at the moment. Um, some of the worst in the world. So pretty broken, quite frankly. Uh, what's this? A Tipping Barn says, Mr. H is my favourite phrenology podcast. <laughs> Thanks so much. Appreciate it, mate. Thanks. <laughs> well, phrenology is a bit of science of reading the bumps on one's head. It needs to be done, mate. That's, well, that's and, well, some people in the chat wouldn't know that. So. Oh, that's fine.